Support this podcast via our Patreon and get more writerly goodness. Visit patreon.com slash nanocast to join up. Welcome to NaNoWriMo Every Month. My name is J. Daniel Sawyer. I'm the author of some 20 books, 34 short stories, and numerous articles and other things. And I am your guide on this journey to use NaNoWriMo to level up to professional output levels. Welcome to The Questions, Episode 42. Back in The Questions, Episode 40, Rob asked about upping the average word rate in terms of how many words he was doing per day. Today, he writes, I have no trouble typing fast. I can type around 60 words per minute, but I can't seem to write more than an average of 500 to 700 words in an hour. I don't know if it's a focus thing or what. That's why I'm hoping Mr. Sawyer has some advice on how to bump that up. Well, Rob, as I alluded to... Okay, I didn't allude to it. I sort of hit it on the head with a hammer until it crawled home to die in a twitching, bloody, awful mess. Focus really is the thing, but uh, I suppose it's worth looking at what kind of focus we're talking about. When you're focusing on solving a math problem, for example... That involves a lot of work in the executive command module of your brain, in your prefrontal cortex. That part of your brain is particularly well-suited and very narrowly suited to doing a specific kind of work. It's logical triage. It's decision-making sort of work. It's like the CPU in your computer. Back in the rest of your brain, in the mammalian and reptilian brain, back underneath the prefrontal cortex, you have all sorts of modules that work in tandem and parallel to sort information, to make associations between images and sense experiences and thoughts and ideas. And that's going on in the background all the time. When I talk about trusting your subconscious... It tends to freak people out, and I know that it tends to freak people out because not only have people told me, but I've seen the reaction that newer writers have to other writers that preach the same gospel, so to speak. The basic reaction is one of horror to the idea that you would give up this magnificent rational capability that you've got in order to write, because... Rationality is sort of the essence of human nature. It seems ridiculous to people to train themselves up in a series of techniques and then to go into the writing room and then deliberately shut down that part of your brain that you've been training and just try to flow from the subconscious. Here's why that works. And it has a lot to do with maintaining the right kind of focus, too. Because intense focus from the rational centers of your brain will wear you out. It's absolutely exhausting to sit there and think, okay, what happens next? Okay, what happens next? Okay, is this word the right word to put here? Oh, this sentence doesn't really convey the subtext that I'm trying to employ. Ah, but if my hero is in this situation and he's got these 15 other things going on, these are the possible ways he can get out of it, and the game logic would imply that he'd want to do this, but that's too difficult, so I'm going to route him through this other way, which will be easier to accomplish within the story and still meet my word count goals, that kind of thing. That is an exhausting way to write. Sometimes, with some sorts of stories, you have to do sort of the plot logic thing occasionally because you've got multiple strands going on that have to intersect at different points, and you sometimes do have to draw a picture. But... The trick to writing and being productive is actually learning to shut off that part of your brain. In other words, the trick is to allow all of those techniques, those deliberate, rationally constructed tools that you have learned and practiced, seep in to your autonomic nervous system into the lower part of your brain. Because basically what you've got here, in terms of processing power, is in your forebrain you've got a good quad-core CPU or a six-core CPU or something like that. You know, it's fairly powerful. But it's nothing compared to the bank of parallel processing GPUs you have stacked in your mammalian or reptilian brain in all those little specialized modules in the back. You want to employ your rationality, the CPU part of your brain, 
as little as possible. It only needs to step in when a decision between two equally good alternatives has to be made. And if you're running straight off that bank of GPUs in the back of your brain, that kind of situation won't come up very often. It'll come up more often in some genres than others, but it won't come up very often regardless, compared to how you would write if you're trying to write fully from your forebrain CPU. This is how you get a lot of layering in the fiction of good veteran writers, because that bank of GPUs is making all those associations. All those associations, whether they've got anything to do with each other in a rational sense or not, come out into the story through metaphor and image and simile and language and character development and situational ethical crisis and humor and wordplay, all those things. And a good writer will write stories that have got Teramisu-like layer cakes of this kind of stuff in there, and they usually won't even know it. Ask a writer, what's the theme of this story? Or, why did you decide to deal with mortality as a major theme in story X? Most of the time, a writer will look at you and go, I did? I didn't realize that. I'll have to go back and read that. And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, I really did. Huh, huh, hadn't planned on doing that. I guess my subconscious was at work without me knowing it. It happened with Stephen King in The Shining. He didn't realize he was writing about himself as an alcoholic. Happened to him again in Carrie, and to this day he maintains that that's not about puberty, even though it is. Because, as a good writer, he got out of his own way and just wrote the story. And he let his racks of GPUs in the back do all the heavy lifting. So if you want to be upping your average word rate per hour, as opposed to just per day, the trick really is going to be to free your subconscious. And the kinds of tricks that work are different for every person, and they change for every person over the course of a lifetime. I, for example, used to be able to write fastest if I had TED Talks running in the background. I would easily hit my peak word rate and sustain for several hours, and I would knock out three, four, five thousand word days beautifully with TED Talks during a certain season of my life. Now, that season lasted about six months. Right now, for some reason, my brain is on the prowl for new and interesting stuff. So if I've got TED Talks on in the background, I'm watching the TED Talks and I'm not writing. And that slows me down. At the moment, I seem to do better with fiction I'm already familiar with running in the background. Um, audiobooks or TV shows running on a screen elsewhere in the room because I've had a rough year emotionally, and that gives me some familiarity and comfort for the noisy parts of my head, which at the moment are the anxious emotional parts. That gives that part of my head something comfortable to latch onto so that it helps me relax and I can flow into the words. You're going to have to find out by trial and error how to achieve that focus. You may need a messy office. You may need a clean one. It's different for every person. You may need music, or white noise, or conversation just low enough to be out of the edge of hearing, or silence. You might need a dog curled up on the divan next to you, like I've got right now, or you might need a cat occasionally interfering with you and making you laugh to break the tension, or you might need some place where nobody can interrupt you no matter what. You might need a place you're comfortable you might need a place you're uncomfortable and desperately want to get away from. And what kind of place you need will change as the events in your life put you in different headspaces from time to time and for long seasons. Things will change on short cycle basis based on transitory things. Things will change on a long cycle basis based on where your skill levels are at, what sort of personal crap you're dealing with, how old you are. Your age makes a tremendous difference to how your brain functions, and that comes out in the kinds of habits and rituals that you need to develop around your writing. What I'm saying is that it's going to be a constantly moving target, and anything you find out that works for you right now, there will come a time, sooner or later, when it doesn't work anymore. Sometimes it might be sudden, sometimes it might just sort of tail off in its effectiveness. But 
that's one of the reasons keeping a word count spreadsheet is a good idea. And by the way, for uh, people who are supporting this via Patreon, I'm going to be uploading as a reward my word count tracker spreadsheet to help you track your productivity, since some of you have asked me a few times how I do it. And I even did an episode on the topic. So uh, watch the Patreon feed for that, and I'm going to do it a few days after this episode airs, so that if you want it, you've got a chance to hop on the feed so that you'll get access to it. But anyway, because it's a moving target, and moving baselines are something humans have a terrible time grappling with, it's one of the good reasons to use a word count tracker, because you can look back at your history and see the times in your life when you were doing better or worse, and then you can correlate those with stuff that was going on in your life and try to figure out ways around and through. All of which is to say that upping your word count is going to be as individual as you are, and being willing to think a little outside your normal box and try different things to goose your creativity is the best way to proceed. Treat it as a long-term experimental project, and be willing to change the conditions of the experiment from time to time as the conditions in your life change as well. I hope that helps, and I'll see you tomorrow. NaNoWriMo Every Month is written and presented by J. Daniel Sawyer and produced by Artistic Whispers Productions. Visit our website at NaNoWriMoEveryMonth.com and leave a tip in the tip jar or join the Patreon to support this podcast. NaNoWriMo Every Month is copyright 2016 by J. Daniel Sawyer and Artistic Whispers Productions and is released under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution no derivatives license. 